Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Artifact 4, Kaiser against Belarus, let us continue on from the last of off. So we're almost done dealing Black Monday. Luckily, Germany has, has finally completed their uh, Black Monday reforms. Uh, but you're not actually able to do your, uh, you're not allowed to finish yours until Germany's done theirs. Which I find very weird, I think it might be the only country that does that? At least to the best of my knowledge, it's the only country we have to wait for another country to do a focus. Regarding Black Monday at the very least. In order to finish your own. Well, for now, we'll get that done, spend the welfare state, and by the end of this episode, we should have fully proclaimed the Belarusian People's Republic. We'll see if we get an extra focus tree after this. I'm hoping that we do, but I, I'm not actually 100% not too sure. Uh, 75 political power, yes, I'll get even more civilian factories. Very happy to see it. What is our current consumer goods right now? 35%. We're using six to build our weapons factories. That's actually really nice. So we, we do need more weapons, because we literally have, I think, one factory? One military factory, which is not great. And what we want to do is we want to push our way towards Barcelona. Barcelona is the most important province here. It's their current capital. We probably want to put our troops right on the um, the seaside here. We can also train two more divisions. So you know what? One, two, crank them out. Yeah, we're seeing 1.3 thousand rifles, but that's not so bad. But two factories here. No, I lied. But give me one factory, one factory here. Give me the interwar fighters. We do, I guess, need to build some bombers then. I mean, I guess they can actually just ask Germany for the, um... The license production. Can you just give me bombers? There we go. So then, instead of building the interwar fighters, we're gonna build German... We're going to build German uh, close air support units. And we'll get those done, I mean, whenever we eventually have four factories start slowly producing them. He's doing pretty cooperation. Thank 250 support weapons. I... <laughs> I gave you 300 of them. I don't need more. I mean, I, I guess I appreciate it, but I also don't need it. Here, take 150 of them back. Freaking weirdos. Don't try to reinforce this province if we can. Okay, we got there in time. My 67. I mean, how many troops does the King of Spain have right now? 12 to 65 versus 11 to 44. I believe that we should have more units than they do. We want to actually push our way this way. Once we're not being attacked anymore, we're going to immediately counterattack into this province. Not too concerned with you, even though we're going to be taking a 50% penalty. That'll go away in just a quick moment. Okay, we'll say our breakthrough is terrible. In multiple combats. They keep giving me support weapons. I, I don't need the support equipment. Like, I legitimately don't need it. The visit of Prince Waldemir and uh, Sigismund. As part of the concentrated effort by, by the government to maintain good relations with the German Empire, the ambassador in Berlin secured an official village for the two princes of the, Ho the Hohenholzerin family. I don't know why I can't pronounce their name. Uh, brothers Valdemir and Sigismund, nephews of Kaiser Wilhelm II, arrived in Minsk the other day before embarking on a tour of the country tailored to their interest. Upon their arrival, they were greeted by, an by the expected military parade, where Valdemir quietly inspected the details on the uniform of the soldiers of the People's Army. As an avid auto uh, automotive enthusiast, uh, the princelings visited the burgeoning Minsk automobile plant, impressed by the ability of a small nation of what you're standing to produce cars in the first place. Wait. Impressed by the ability of a small nation of what you to produce cars in the first place, considering the image of the country's rural backwater. The visit concluded with a ball at the National Theater, bringing together a majority of the region's notable figures and high society. The Blizzard's son proved to be successful as it went without incidents and presented positively in the German press, helping to raise awareness and improve our image abroad. A few days later, uh, Branslad Toroskivigit received a letter and package from Prince Valdemir containing a set of tin toy soldiers uh, made by the prince himself that looked like Belarusian soldiers, with a letter signed Oz Uladzimir, a Belarusian name that he had been playfully given during the tour. Prince Sigmund's gra uh, gratitude has been felt more directly as more business savvy royals returned with more than a few economic opportunities for his friends in the German industry. He would be happily mentioned that they were gotten a tip of a certain Prince Sigmund. 
Okay, five sensibility for the political power. I'll take it. Followed it up with expanding the welfare state. I will say I did. I feel like I butchered a lot of the names there. Do I take a... I'm going to say no to you. I think we need to start saving our political power. I can't waste 125 of it to build one civilian factory, at least right now. I think, yeah, just like right now, it does not make sense. You can always wait. Get our other stuff here done first. You know, navies, in industries. Can't go to personal mobilization. We'll be happy with that. Yeah, we'll keep on assisting these guys where, we're, where we can. CNT, how many manpower do you guys? 11 to 3rd. Okay, so they like no manpower. Like 11,000, 12,000 ish. So the CNT is eventually going to start to falter, which I'm happy with. We're happy to see them kind of start to collapse. We have 12 to 49 on you. Cuba joined the Rex Pact. I don't think there's anybody in. Maybe, I guess maybe these guys go syndicalists. I really don't know their paths. The Cuba's in the Reich's Pact. But that, again, it doesn't really do anything. I mean, it can project power, but... You know, I'm not even going to give them anything anymore. I guess it can project power into the CSA, but... That might be about it. Is there anything we can use all this for? Like an engineering company? Just give them engineering companies. Give them a little bit more entrenchment. Should be fine. Yeah, Bulgaria's starting to lose the war. Very unfortunate. I really thought there was a chance that they could have gotten it. I mean, at some point we did occupy Bucharest, but... Yeah, unfortunately not everything can end uh, all happily. What do you guys need to do to go... Preventative coup, democracy prevails... I guess if they go 39 election and they can vote in the socialist? Send it to the economy... So, I mean, technically, I guess Cuba could be a launching off point for an invasion of Venezuela. Which could be really, really good, because they do have a lot of oil that we want to, uh... I don't know if we can really use it too much, but, you know, the Reich's Pact as a whole could use. And we'll take the 39 uh, rifles right now. You know, China did secure their independence. Germany's Asia took a little bit of a beating there. And aside from that... I mean, Matt Cleek is going to kill Mongolia in just a second. I don't know how the hell they're not already dead. They'll kill Mongolia. They'll probably turn around to kill uh, Tibet as well. Because they're not in a faction. They just join in a war together. Okay, we have about 10 more days on you. Then we can claim the left. Kind of a uh, terrible focus. All it does is give us a little bit more party popularity. I mean, we already have 46. I mean, we'll put us over 51, which I guess will give us just more political power. Which, I mean, isn't bad. It's 0.05 political power every day. Okay, so you got six days. Japan's announced their ambitions. You do give us 200 political power just for doing Belarus proud and free. Which we'll use to definitely hire some ministers, get our... I mean, actually, do I need... Because right now we cap at 4.5%. Do I need more manpower? I think right now the answer is no. I don't think we need it. Like, maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. And, you know, I very well could be. But I think for the most part we're kind of okay. When it comes to manpower at the very least. Everything else we might want to uh, focus a bit more on. I think after we're, we're done our uh, political tree, we then want to start getting our way down towards you know, military factories. Yeah, so there's four military factories in here. I would love each and every one of them. So if I can get all those done... It'd be, it'd be, mwah, beautiful. So what are you? More recruitment population, less training time. Training time, honestly, never been a big issue for me. If I need my units deployed faster, I would just deploy them faster. We're on expert focus. We can definitely go to free trade. We'll do that, there we go. Because again, we don't really produce, we produce like five steel. I mean, we are missing steel. We probably could deal with getting some. You know, I will trade one factory away to Germany. Again, free trade doesn't change any of that. It's not like if we didn't have free trade, we would have enough steel. Uh, we wouldn't need to import any. Okay, so you're 1940 tech. A little bit too expensive for us right now. I will go for Grand Battle Plan. Got that going.
Yeah, move you around like this. Okay, so yeah, Hungary ended up losing the war. Not a major surprise. Actually, they didn't give Illyria, Galicia, or Bohemia any territory. Or at least not yet. They might do it in the future. So did he go? Okay, Bulgaria just lost the war. I don't think anybody should be too surprised by that. You have about 20 days on you. Okay. So overall, I'm, I'm feeling pretty decent with where we're at right now. Poland... Being the Republic is a little bit of a wild card. They can go either pro-Russia, they could go pro-Germany. Um, I guess they could also be independent and neutral. Yeah, because right now, I mean, they're social democratic. I don't know if that really means anything for us. At least right now. Because I don't think they actually care about the ideology of um, Russia. It doesn't care a matter of Russia's national populist. Poland social democratic, they'll still align with them. Yeah, we're getting in a little bit more damage. Chad and Nigeria have declared their independence from the French. I don't think I've, we never really see these succeed. The only way they can actually ever really succeed is if Tunisia rebels and rushes their way to Algeria. Or to uh, Algiers, I guess, to be a little bit more specific. Then they could end up dying. Can you attack here? No. I'm gonna wait until you wasted all your organization. Get some damage in here. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, defend this province. Defend it with your goddamn life. Yeah, you guys will just deploy here. We can actually have the 17 units now. So maybe we, maybe we should actually be looking at some more... Um, Maybe we should be looking at more recruited population. I mean, the penalty is what? Like a recruitment? Recruitment speed? It's not that bad. Well, you're not. If, until we're actually at 4.5. Eh, I'm mean, getting close. You know what? Boom. Give me extended conscription. We're making progress. There it goes. So I'm pretty sure it's like a pretty decent city. It's worth... I mean, okay, it's worth three victory points. Again, Barcelona. Barcelona's the big boy. Barcelona's the city that everybody wants. Deploy you here. This, that'll be 12. 12, 14, 16, 18. Get our units deployed where we can. That's the French. We don't care about them right now. Seventy-five. I'm just thinking, maybe we can take this province, but I don't know though. You can see that they're yeah, like you can see that um, CNT is trying to take some uh, supply issues, both on the manpower front and on the supply side as well. So you're invading Dalkuman Union. Surprisingly, you didn't uh, align yourself with Germany. I think they usually do, but it might only. I think they're more likely to do it with Russia go socialist. Okay, we're one city away from Barcelona. A Ron's clear war on the Ottoman Empire a little bit earlier than the rest of the Cairo Pact, but you know what? You do you. Tanks, garbage. 939 artillery, I will take you, and I'll even take the 1940 support weapons, because I'm a madman. Yeah, so they're going to war over, I believe it's this province right there. We'll see who comes out on top. It's not like, I don't think Egypt can attack earlier, if uh, the Ottomans and Iran are at war. I think it makes sense if they could, but it's just, it's not a uh, possibility under the current mechanics. Let's see if we can get you kicked out of here. Armenia's uprise against the Ottoman Empire. It may be a little bit premature. Uruguay joined the alliance with Brazil, that's okay. Argentina joined the Reichs Pact, excellent for me. Again, them joining the Reichs Pact, it's nice. But, like, who are you going to fight, right? You got Chile on site. I mean, Bolivia. I mean, at best, it would be... Um, Peru. They're, they're in the... Look how, look how sad the, the, the French economic alliance is. 
It's just Mexico, Peru, France, and Britain. Even Mex even Italy's not actually aligned with it right now, which is just amazing. Okay, so yeah, we'll be in Barcelona in just a second. And that should be, yeah, there's the NT. Boom, dead. Troops can return home. We've successfully prevented revolution in Spain. Hopefully they will join up with the Reichspact. If they do, we stand alone. It'll all be for naught, but, you know, you, you can't... Sometimes you can't make things work all the time. We're now slowly building up artillery pieces. If I was to put an artillery in every army, how expensive would that be? It would be four, 12... I mean, it's only actually a negative 106. It's not horrible. But for right now, I think we're okay with where we're at. Okay, the Equan Revolt. Belarus Proud and Free will be done in just a moment. You don't want to change our trade plans. And now it gets up to 300 political power, which is very nice. Which does mean... We get a new flag with this? No, we don't get a new flag, but I think we do have a new name. You can see right there, just poking out. We are now the Belarusian People's Republic. And with that, I can now guilt-free take this, because it's going to cost us... I mean, it's going to cost us way more than I think one civilian factory maybe is worth, but... Oh, that would go with land for construction speed, just so we can get our way closer towards... Um, to military factories. Honestly, like, I'm kind of like a defense guy here would be pretty good. You know what? Give me the organization. Deploy you into this army. All of you, by the way, will just deploy straight into uh, blue. We'll have 12 divisions, which is not, I, don't, I don't think is bad. I mean, Ukraine's got 32. Lithuania's got 10. We have 13. No, we have 12 right now. And then Little Riga has, I think, zero. No, they actually have four. Good for you, Riga. Good for you. But I'm pretty sure Finland is screwed. I, I can't see Finland doing too much. But the amount of troops... Actually, wait. No, Russia took all their troops off of here. Oh, because they're at war with Don Kuban. Yeah, yeah. That actually makes perfect sense. It does, unfortunately, mean that the Russian front with Ukraine is going to be pretty powerful. Deeper cooperation... So it just automatically puts stuff in there. But it's, it's also, I think it's just bad. I'm going to say no to it. I don't think it's worthwhile. I mean, I can just send you more support weapons. I have 250 of them. As long as you don't give them back to me. Give them to Lithuania. Give them to Ukraine. Give them to Riga. Maybe even Finland. I don't know if they can accept it. I don't know if they're considered Eastern European for the, um, for the thing. Actually, it does say right here. Are you in it? You are in it, okay. Estonia's in it, Riga is in it. Germany, of course, isn't. But it's, it's every, basically, it's every country that's fo uh, bordering Russia. Except for Riga. Riga's not bordering Russia, but you know what I mean. Okay, Armenia died. I wonder if, like, the Ottomans are going to be putting a lot of their troops on the border with, uh, with Iran. Which does mean that they're probably going to be opened up pretty openly against uh, Yemen and Egypt. Terranacia, what do you guys do? You are still a puppet of the Ottomans. I don't know if you have done the decision where you try to put, um... Yeah, put Idris on the throne. I don't know if that's actually happened or not. Okay, Kwan's been annexed. But here's the thing, if Jamal Shamir... And Serenasia, stay aligned with the Ottomans. The Egyptians are going to have, I think, like a terrible time. That's at least my my guess about what's going to be happening here. Artillery attack. Give me that. Give me the entrenchment, actually. Having really strong defensive troops on the border of Russia it does seem pretty good. I do notice that Russia right now has like no troops anywhere on the border. So if I was to attack, I think now would be more when I would want to do it. But I don't. Of course, I don't have really much choice. But I do think, at least for right now, this is going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thank you very much for watching, my saints. If you enjoyed, run thumbs up. If not, do a thumbs down. You want to subscribe, and goodbye.